Welcome everybody to another OpenShift Commons briefing. This time um, it's one of my uh, top 10 things that I want to learn more about serverless and Knative and how it all works with OpenShift and what the implications are for people using OpenShift and Kubernetes. Um, I think a lot of folks have heard the terms. Um, Natalie Vinto, who's with Red Hat um, out of our Italian front, um, is going to give us a talk about that. We have a couple of other folks that are on the line as well who can answer your question, including Michael Hasenblas. So um, I'm going to let Natali um, introduce himself and get started. Yeah, thanks, Diane. Uh, yes, as you say, uh, my name is Natali. I'm uh, from Italy, and I work in Red Hat as an OpenShift uh, specialist solution architect. Uh, so my role is really to bring to our customer uh, to their container journey with OpenShift. And uh, I'm uh, recently focusing in a serverless computing model, a uh, serverless computing model, and uh, to show that OpenShift can also be the platform for serverless, for microservices, for anything uh, the modern IT uh, needs today. Um, so this will be a, an update on uh, how to do serverless on OpenShift and Kubernetes. And uh, lots of things uh, are changing fast in this world. And it's cool that we can also have an open source solution, solution in this new uh, parad paradigm of serverless, which is uh, really thrilling the IT world. So uh, I, would just, uh, I would like just to share with you uh, th those news that we have from Red Hat and, and from the community. So if it's OK, I, I will uh, proceed. Uh, with uh, with the slides, um, yeah, uh, you know of course what is OpenShift, but I just would I just wanted to focus again on the fact that OpenShift it's a community, it's a a, um, a group of open source project. The, the 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 major project is Kubernetes, of course, and OKD, which is our upstream version of OpenShift container platform. Uh, and uh, around this, there is an ecosystem of uh, many open source projects that build and, uh, and contribute to the OpenShift uh, ecosystem. Um, and yes, it's awesome because it's open source. And what the most important thing is that, uh, that we are talking about standards because OpenShift uh, is about the Cloud Native Co Computing Foundation and the Open Container Initiative, of course, and uh, there are standards, standards, standards. This is very important in technology, and we join uh, uh, very helpfully this, um, uh, the Linux Foundation with building those standards. This is the ecosystem, actual ecosystem of uh, Kubernetes and OpenShift, and uh, yes, this is a, a serverless data center. It's, it's a, just a joke from our no code, but uh, it uh, gives the sense of what people think about when, uh, when they think about uh, serverless. They may think that uh, serverless is something that doesn't exist, in, but actually is, uh, uh, is, not, is not like that. If we follow the Wikipedia uh, definition, it's a computing execution model. Uh, so uh, real, uh, if you look at the diagram on, on the right, it's real uh, some uh, pipeline of uh, some event that trigger some uh, uh, action and give some results. So with a uh, with serverless computing model, you have always this pipeline, this process, and um, there are actually uh, lots of definition. The most famous is from Martin Follower. Uh, yes, is something that lets you run your server side logic in stateless containers, even triggered. And if you look uh, again on the diagram, it's it's always event action result with some trigger. And this is called also function as a service. Uh, the most important thing that the, con the, the, um, the cloud net, the cl cloud netting computing foundation made a, a, um, a white paper ar around serverless. So the around serverless, there is a, also a, a standard definition and uh, it defined the, the serverless computing uh, like a concept to, to let you build and run your application without requiring any server management. So you can uh, write your function, deploy your function, and execute the scale uh, them in uh, somewhere. Uh, so what is a function as a service and what is serverless? A function is a programming model 
serverless like more uh, looks like more a billing model uh, so what we need uh, we we need together because we need uh, something to run function but also something to metering those function uh, and this diagram explains good how is the relationship between function as a service and serverless so serverless is really the engine that lets you uh, run and scale your function uh, in this paradigm which is function as a service uh, this is there are uh, there is an architecture uh, architectural revolution around this. You may have seen those decks also to uh, um, Red Dot Summit in San Francisco. Is um, there is this evolution from service? Uh, then we went to microservices, and now we are on function. Uh, actually, the microservices conversion is still ongoing. We are uh, still a lot. We have still a lot of uh, monoliths and legacy application. But here we have some uh, tiny definition, which are those functions, which are single action, ephemeral, and uh, related to some context. So if you look on this, on this slide, with function, you uh, have more productivity, but you lose control because you don't care who is gonna run your function. You only care uh, the fact that your function is gonna run somewhere and it's gonna, it's gonna scale up very fast. Um, this is a guy, IT guy before the microservices world, uh, <laughs> but, uh, and now we, with serverless, we looks like we are in teleporting in the Star Trek because it, it looks really a, a new world. So, but how does it work? Uh, we have always that pipeline, if you remember, some haven't fired some uh, function, some string or some haven't. And this function uh, going um, in output something that uh, need to be consumed to somewhere, something else. Could be a microservices, could be another function. And this is the force of this, of this paradigm. If you look uh, here, this is the function life cycle uh, defined in the standard. So in this uh, function life cycle, you have uh, the definition of your function, your code that need to be uh, created from some from some circuit and then version it before be, uh, being published. So you have many versions of your function and you may decide to update or just to go through the revision of this function. So this is in the standard actually. Uh, the question is, is serverless open source? Uh, of course, because we are talking always about standards, standard standards. We are talking about Cloud Native Computing Foundation and cloud events which is uh, the framework uh, around the serverless made by cloud native computing foundation and all, of course red dot and Linux foundation are following uh, uh, this very well so if you look in this uh, slide here we have a, a landscape of project uh, around serverless so also the serverless landscape is really rich like the kubernetes one that we've seen before there are lots of open source projects but also uh, lots of um, public cloud implementation serverless, uh, like uh, AWS, uh, Lambda, Azure Function, or Google Cloud Function. We may know serverless more for those public clouds, but now it's possible to have also in our hybrid cloud solution with open source implementation. If you look at this serverless timeline, you see this evolution of serverless uh, starting from AWS. We are now on Knative. Knative is the uh, Kubernetes implementation that is the baseline for serverless. What does it mean? Um, here, uh, I just wanted to show you uh, some data around serverless. So what about uh, organization interested in serverless? Uh, what about technologies for serverless? Uh, we see that there is uh, some interest for backend, web application, process automation, um, and expectation around serverless. Because uh, the most important thing is that people uh, are enlightened by this fact that uh, serverless can reduce the scaling cost and the complexity and the operational cost. So if you remember the previous slide, we lose control, but we, we scale up very fast. Um, uh, and what about the risk around serverless? If we lose control, we may be concerned about uh, security issue, about testing. So those are the main concern that are the, um, the this this um, this report uh, that we read that made uh, around serverless technology, um, Richard. And uh, uh, what people expect uh, about serverless? 
security uh, API gateway, uh, one example about this. And uh, the technology integration, it's a really common uh, landscape for uh, uh, HTTP webhooks and API integration. Uh, nice, nice also to have it in Kubernetes events. So if we want to collect from Kubernetes and OpenShift events around uh, uh, pods, logs, health check, it's, it's a good use case that we can have in place. And uh, languages. Languages, uh, the, there is a lot of interest around Java, Node.js, Python uh, with serverless. Um, use cases, use cases uh, about serverless. For instance, uh, in your monitoring, uh, if you want to monitor something uh, in order to trigger some action, if you remember the pipeline, it, it was event, action, and then the result. Uh, so if you want to monitor something like verifying some quota that can trigger some uh, billing server, uh, monitoring is a good use case for serverless, but also storage, for instance, if you want to reach to get some event from the storage and you want to make some uh, manipulation or trigger some, uh, some action from your storage is, is another good use case. Of course, web APIs, because is the fact that can scale uh, a lot. Remember that serverless has, are always stateless. So when you run your function, they don't have so much logic inside, but they can scale uh, fast and go much in parallel. So the web APIs is also a good um, use case. And of course, IOT, IoT and sensors, because you could have multiple source, multiple definition of uh, multiple devices, uh, lots of devices that need to trigger some action and serverless is the best paradigm for this. Uh, use cases very common, as we said, the webhooks, uh, ta uh, tasks like uh, cron, um, PDF generation or uh, image manipulation, uh, all around this world and everything is asynchronous, con concurrent and easy to parallelize. It's a very good fit on serverless. Um, well, what about not to put in serverless? Because it looks the uh, panacea for uh, e everything, but uh, it's not actually. Because you, if you have uh, some uh, real-time application that requires ultra low latency uh, spec for networking, it may not be a good place. Or long running task that cannot be split into steps. Uh, if you look at the, uh, in each implementation of serverless, there is always a timeout that you need to set up. So a function couldn't run more than this timeout. If you go to something like AWS Lambda, it's five, about five minutes. If you go to some uh, implementation uh, like in Knative in OpenShift, could be uh, it's always five minutes. So you shouldn't uh, violate the paradigm of having some function that run for a long time. You should have a, a little function that, that make little tasks and then uh, maybe uh, you call another function to continue the work. Uh, so if you have an advanced or complex topic, it's not a good fix. And if you require a lot of, of our specific memory or CPU, that's because serverless is the um, best effort. So you run those functions, you run multiple functions, and you collect the output for them, but you don't really care about if any function fails. Uh, it may happen. So you have to be aware that uh, failure may happen in this world. And let's go to the most interesting part, which is this, how to do serverless in my uh, open source serverless. Well, it's possible with OpenShift and OpenShift ecosystem of uh, Components. If you if you look at how it's made OpenShift, of course there is the operating system. There is Kubernetes. On top of Kubernetes, we have uh, uh, automated operation that can be with operators, Kubernetes operators. We have Histio for service mesh, and on top we have Knative. Knative is the base for delivering serverless in Kubernetes and it's supposed to be something uh, like the baseline that has to be used for, from some tiny implementation of serverless. Um, like uh, if we think about Kubeless or Reef, uh, Apache OpenWhisk is another uh, serverless implementation, but it's more complete, it doesn't fit very well the Knative world. Or CamelK, which uh, is a Camel implementation for Knative, so the concept here is really uh, to provide the base 
of some uh, Steiner sim serverless implementation that could invoke Knative to run your function inside Kubernetes. So this is really important because it's really integrated into in Kubernetes and you have this stack uh, to build your function as a service on, on top of Kubernetes and OpenShift. Um, service mesh with Istio, of course, is used by Knative in order to make uh, apply security routes and policies and also make a split uh, around traffic in your pods and operator framework can be used also to uh, automize uh, uh, the maintenance or uh, the components around uh, Knative. Uh, but uh, at the end, what is Knative? As we said, is an extension to Kubernetes and as a building blocks for uh, container-based application that can run everywhere. If you follow the, if you, if we follow the definition on the Knative project, but uh, just to remember this, Knative is really the base foundation for a serverless paradigm in Kubernetes and OpenShift. So provide those building blocks to run the function. And how does it? Uh, with three major components. One is the build, is a, some, is a component in Knative that can build container from your source code. So you, you deploy your function, uh, the build uh, is in charge to compile uh, the source code, put in a container and uh, put in the, uh, putting it in, in, in the platform. So um, putting in the read registry, internal registry of, of OpenShift, uh, for instance, and um, serving. The serving is the, um, the, the core of the serverless uh, implementation around Knative because it's the one that lets you scale your application and it's uh, the one that uh, responds to event. It's event-driven model. Uh, so if there is any trigger to be fired, uh, serve, Knative serving is the one that spawns your container containing your function. And is in charge, of course, of uh, maintaining uh, the revision and uh, around your function and uh, and the versioning. Uh, events is another important, uh, very important component around Knative because it's the one that make the the max the, the pipeline between the um, events around Kubernetes and the events that your function need to be to to consume. Um, if we go in depth in the, the Knative build components. We have this object, uh, of course, we are here in uh, OpenShift and Kubernetes, so everything is, uh, can uh, in, be um, declarative uh, infrastructure as a code. So how does it work? Uh, it starts from your source code when there is your function. So you have to tell where is your function. In this example, it's uh, on GitHub on somewhere. And you have to also to, uh, to define which step to uh, compile your function. So you have to tell which container to start to deploy to, to compile your function and uh, which image to use to build your function, right? Um, and, the, uh, and there is the Knative serving. So Knative serving is the really the core of this work. You have uh, another terminology here, uh, which is uh, the service. Uh, and uh, this, this service is not the K, uh, Kubernetes service, it's a top level controller that manages the, the route and the configuration. So you have the service, which, which, is a, which is a high level representation of your function. This service manages the route. The route is actually some route that is an address that um, um, resolves to the pod running your function. And the configuration. The configuration is the, uh, the is the layer is the representation uh, of your revision of your function. So if you remember uh, uh, the first uh, diagram in the specification about uh, uh, the functional lifecycle, here the functional lifecycle is defined in terms of a configuration and revision. So you define some configuration and then you, your function version is a, a revision. And you can decide to split the traffic across the re, those revision, uh, keeping the function alive or just let the uh, Knative uh, spawning a, a new function when it's needed. So this is the very powerful mechanism that makes uh, the serverless uh, uh, implementation uh, responsive and uh, of course on demand. You don't need to keep the function, the, the function will be scaled automatically up or scaled down in terms of uh, some trigger. 
and the uh, eventing uh, component of, of Knative, which is uh, the one that uh, uh, connect uh, inside Knative uh, ev internal events and external events. It's a kind of complex uh, implementation that uh, may require also uh, some uh, streaming or messaging system like uh, Kafka. In uh, recent implementation, we have a Kafka, uh, we have a, a Kafka re reference uh, in for Knative eventing. This works is really uh, undergoing, is it's really in progress. Uh, and is following the specification from cloud events. So everything that you see here is some uh, specification, is some uh, some standard that has been first declared and then implemented uh, as open source. Um, the question is: uh, Is Knative enough for serverless? Like we've seen, well, like, like we said before, Knative is a, a building block to run a, a function as a service in uh, our platform. So the idea here is yes, it can run serverless, but uh, some other lighter implementation should invoke Knative and take care, uh, maybe uh, make the life easier to developers to simplify the uh, creation of a, a environment of a programming language environment, for instance, or or just the, the execution of for serv for 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 function. Um, so serverless is not complete along with Knative. Uh, it's uh, enough, but not complete. We need some lighter uh, in, uh, runner on top that can do uh, the function as a set. Um, the capabilities of uh, Knative are really, um, uh, really uh, adherent to standards. Uh, if you know the 12 factor app is a definition on how should uh, be um, written some uh, application, some um, best practice to, to follow to run application, and the Knative custom resource definition uh, for for this uh, really uh, have some one to one mapping uh, to the 12 factor app definition. So the component that we seen before about configuration, yeah, uh, configuration revision routes services. Hello. I cannot. I cannot see you very well. Could everybody mute? If you're not muted, I'm. I'm just trying to mute everybody. Natalie, sorry. There's a person who no, no, just, no problem, no problem. just came in named Bob. I'm not able to mute. Sorry no about that. I, I, Go no for problem. it. I, I thought it was a was a question, so <laughs> I was listening. So. To come back to our uh, concept here, so we have a one-to-one -one map between the 12-factor hub definition uh, and Knative uh, custom re resources definition. In terms of configuration, uh, in the 12-factor hub, there is the, the one, one point is to keep the code, the configuration separate, and configuration and revision are the way to go to implement it. Um, so each configuration change trigger the creation of new revision is, a, is about this topic again. And with uh, routing and services, we have uh, this possibility. So this is uh, important. Uh, another, an, uh, another time we see that we have a standard and we have an implementation that uh, follow this number, these standards in, uh, in the open source way. And I prepared uh, uh, a little demo uh, to show Knative capabilities uh, around serverless. Uh, this is the bit.ly URL that I prepared if you want to follow uh, in the while, but we, I think we can, um, we, we can go directly uh, and, and do this uh, little demo. So if you go in, this, in, the, in the link, in that link, that bit.ly, you will land to my repository here that contains uh, um, some how to run the Knative on uh, on um, Minishift. Uh, one moment. Okay. So 
this exam in this example here you will run a, a mini shift uh, with knative and uh, you will follow this example those examples are inspired by kamesh Tampat example and uh, his blog post around knative and openshift is really good i really suggest you to to go there i, I follow it he is a sample to to build this demo and once you configure a uh, mini shift with uh, some uh, some some option uh, uh, like memory, CPU on disk, and uh, also uh, admission controller hooks uh, that are mandatory to install um, Knative and Istio. Uh, you will you have to configure some uh, security content constraints because uh, uh, Istio need it, and um, and then you you're gonna deploy uh, Knative. Knative use as we seen before Istio. So you have to deploy Histio in uh, inside your uh, mini shift in this case, and then you will uh, deploy Knative serving. Knative serving will deploy also the component of Knative build uh, and Knative events. So you have this uh, tiny religion, uh, tiny release of uh, Knative that you you can uh, you can install. Uh, in this example, you have also to, to add this route here. Um, and then you can uh, try your uh, your application. So you you can try your first serverless uh, uh, implementation. But in, in this example here, I, I just want to let you go through configuration and uh, revision in order to um, to explain you uh, the thing that we, we we saw in the slides. So if you go in in this section, for for instance, and you follow uh, the prerequisite. Then you will be able to run uh, your first uh, serverless, your first function in OpenShift Knative based with a Knative build. Um, I will just go through my mini shift here. So you see here, I have my mini shift with my OKD is a mini shift three uh, dot uh, uh, eleven, and uh, it's empty for for the for the moment. Um, so I'll, I will let you see a Node.js function that prints something and uh, two revision of this function expressed in terms of a uh, configuration. Uh, so we, I just, uh, you have just to clone this repository and uh, follow the prerequisite and uh, do, follow this step. So here, I don't know if you see good it. Um, I'm going to create a template, a build template to tell to Knative Builder how to build my, my function. And then I'm going to create my configuration. I will uh, just show you uh, those files once I created it. So uh, once I create my configuration, I need also to define the route. If you remember the diagram before, we have a configuration, we have a route, we have a service, and in our case, we have also a builder. If we follow uh, our... Um, if we follow our mini shift here, uh, we can follow what is happening under the hood in the events of a mini shift. Because if you go to the to the events and um, look for uh, what, look for what what is going under the hood, you see that some pod some pod is, has been created, some uh, some configuration has been created, some route has been created. So you can follow what is going under the hood. And in the while uh, our pod finish is finishing uh, is a compilation because what is happening now is that uh, my Node.js function is going to be put inside a container with Builda. Build Builda is the uh, our tool to build and create container that substitutes uh, Docker. Yes, and which is uh, moreover compliant to OCI uh, standards and consortium. Um, and uh, once it's built, uh, you have a, a new pod in your uh, in your the, in your deployment. You have a new deployment representing your function, and this uh, deployment will cre create a pod running your function. So here you see uh, um, th this pod has been created, uh, and when it's ready, we will have here uh, our pod running and our and uh, Answering uh, with our function. So uh, just to, to just to let you, show, it's ready. But I just wanted to show also uh, because in in the demo we we have to invoke 
the function by a command line, but uh, um, I, will, I will like also to show uh, the source code, of course, of this function. So the function is really a Node.js function that uh, just uh, print out hello OpenShift. And if you go, as, uh, if you give some environment variable, it print that environment variable. So it's really simple. And there is uh, the build that script that lets you build your um, Node.js uh, container containing your function. And, uh, and then you have uh, the template that define it. So uh, in this case, I will show that uh, I'm going to uh, call this script, which is ready here for us just to um, invoke our function. In this case, with Knative, we need to invoke our function using uh, the internal uh, IP address on the platform uh, because of how it's done uh, before. So if you just uh, execute the script, uh, here, I'm going to show you in this case, uh, if you just do it, uh, you will have the function which is answering. So this is the function running in our pod automatically created for us by Knative build with build that. So it, this is really powerful and I want to show you the definition because uh, uh, in the example we use it with a build template. So we have this uh, node build that uh, template that works with uh, from some uh, um, build uh, image in this case, some uh, um, yarn for the case of a Node.js and make something. So it prepared the environment to, to in terms of steps to uh, put our function inside uh, the container that we need. And uh, one thing that you have to look for also is the configuration. So our first revision was about this configuration here and this configuration um, is based on this uh, proper this uh, uh, repository on github is using just this repository and is uh, finding the node.js code because I'm, I'm giving the context here so it's not really guessing it uh, i'm just giving the context here and telling it that uh, you need to use uh, also this template to build uh, our my function. So he is aware that is a Node.js because uh, I'm gonna tell which template to use in this case, and I'm gonna tell which, where is the function, which in my case, in, it is, it is, a, it is this, this function. Uh, if we come back uh, on, uh, on the demo, I just want uh, to, to show you that we can go uh, through uh, another revision. So this is the second revision. In the second revision, uh, uh, the definition of this second revision of what I do is just changing the environment variable here. And I'm writing ciao, which is in Italian, uh, the hello in Italian. Um, and, and if you just go through the second uh, revision in your configuration and you apply this as a, a YAML file again, uh, you will see in the mini shift again, that your function uh, is uh, created. So you have a new function, which now is answering to your request. And if you see it's changed the text, is uh, not anymore hello OpenShift, it's ciao OpenShift. Because I have a new revision of my code, uh, I'm using a new environment variable in this case. But if I change the function in this case, uh, I just need to make a new revision uh, that will build a new uh, container for me, a new image, and uh, will be put in a new pod running this, those function. Uh, another cool thing to, to see here is how to manage uh, revision. So I can, uh, how can I go through those revision? In this example, uh, I, I just uh, went to the, give to the, this route, that first revision, all the traffic uh, sent to this route. In fact, if you if you look here, uh, what I've done after deploying the first uh, revision is a tell that um, the send the, the ten uh, one hundred percent of uh, the traffic will go to these services. But if we want to just uh, give some uh, 50 50 uh, traffic to to them, so if you see here, is referencing the revision name. The revision name is uh, one thing that is uh, coherent with the definition also you can see in the deployment. So here I have two deployments. If I want to split the traffic across two deployment, which are two revision in the Knative world, I can create a route 
and express this traffic splitting in terms of a percentage in the YAML file. So if we just follow the example in the in the in the readme again, uh, if we want just to, to split the traffic uh, and, and we do like this, yeah, we can try to invoke our function again and see that the traffic is really something like 50% with some metric that he has inside. So, uh, and we can also, if you follow the example here, you can uh, define uh, multiple uh, type of split traffic splitting, 90%, 10%. So the, really the, um, the metric is the same, the logic is the same. You define a route, you mention some revision, and you give some percent to, to this revision in order to have this traffic splitting. Um, uh, another question that uh, another thing that interesting to know is those functions uh, exist only until uh, a certain uh, threshold. Uh, so those functions by default exist for five minutes. If you don't fire them, uh, they exist only for five minutes. When they go down, uh, the Knative uh, Autoscaler will create a new pod that contains the, the latest good revision that you deploy. Uh, and if you see, this is possible, it's a changeable. If you go to the Knative serving, uh, which uh, lets you also show that Knative uh, serving as those uh, uh, components, which is the activator, the autoscaler. So the autoscaler is in charge of doing this, and it works with a config map. So if you want to change those parameters in terms of uh, uh, how much time you need to, to want to, to, to let your function scale. Uh, in this case, I, I, I changed this, uh, uh, in my case, uh, if you want just a lower and a higher uh, uh, setting, you change the config map over here and you have uh, the change of this uh, setting. Of course, you don't have to put one hour or more because you are violating the paradigm. So it's not any more serverless, it's something, uh, something else. Um, another thing, cool to see is uh, uh, Istio. So when you install Knative, you also have Istio inside and Istio Ingress Gateway and Ingress Gateway are the one that you uh, deal when you want to uh, invoke your function. Of course, in this example, you are invoking by the internal IP address, but uh, since this is uh, under development work and uh, is, uh, the, uh, the developing is going really fast and really in progress, uh, you can you will also be able to define uh, your route on an high level level and uh, invoke your function internally of your platform. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is was the li this little demo. So if you want to check out it, you have just to go to this uh, Bitly uh, URL and you you can see it. You can run by your own. Um, and that's it. The final part of this is the OpenShift function. So OpenShift Cloud function is really a Red Hat effort to bring uh, open source serverless to your hybrid cloud. So if you want to uh, run uh, your function as a service in your private cloud, with not only on the public cloud, but your private cloud, if you want to run uh, as an open source implementation, you are to extend, contribute, and uh, work uh, on function also on uh, your uh, uh, private cloud implementation, you can do it with a, a Red Hat Cloud function, which will be our products around uh, this top. So if you want to work uh, with community project, there is always uh, OKD and Knative implementation. If you want uh, an, a product, an enterprise product, there will be Red Hat Cloud function giving support on writing a function in this paradigm and just uh, also executing them in OpenShift container and platform in the same uh, or Red Hat way, uh, community first and open source first. So in this case, the serverless data center wouldn't be anymore that uh, empty place, but maybe a rocking and blues uh, uh, data center when you can, you have, you can run your function. Oh, that's, uh, so oh, that's, yeah, <laughs> that's awesome, Natalie. Uh, I love that last GIF, um, and it wonderful. This this has been um, really good. Um, I'm and there's been a couple, a little bit of chatter. Uh, Michael Hasenbos who has been answering a few questions, um, mostly for me, I think, um, in the chat. And so I'm just going to unmute him quickly too. Um, yeah. And we'll see. He's got a bad connection, so there, Michael, you should be there. But I'm, I'm a little, um, 
I, I think I'd like a little more clarification on the relationship or the dependency on Istio for um, K Native. I mean, how? And, and maybe there was a, an earlier slide or something that I, that just went by too fast, but um, that that is still a little bit confusing for for me. And maybe you could tell us, you know, why you have to install Istio um, in order to use K Native, um, or is that just um, me missing a point here? So uh, yes, uh, you're right. Uh, those topics looks uh, very complex. Also, um, Knative is, is still under development. So something is uh, defined really in a uh, few few times. So it's uh, it's complex, uh, really new. But uh, uh, Istio uh, is used by Knative because of a service mesh. So when you want to go across those revision, those traffic splitting, you need something that lets you uh, um, attach your service dynamically. Uh, you need something uh, that need uh, that lets you have some uh, uh, connection between those services. And uh, one thing I, I didn't show you here, uh, maybe I can show you here, no. Uh, no, not anymore, but uh, in any container, in any container representing your function, there is a Istio sidecar here because Istio uh, inject those sidecars in order to let your revision be attached and detached dynamically as a service inside the OpenShift. So the relationship is really related on the fact that Istio uh, uh, enable fast the creation uh, of new revision and the splitting uh, uh, of traffic across those revisions. That's why Histio is used here and is um, mandatory. I mean, it's uh, some some requirement by Kennedy. Okay. And uh, okay. and yeah. All right, that that makes sense for me. And, and then I'm looking to see if there's there's other questions in here. It seems to me that that K Native is is very early days. So um, I mean, I haven't seen or heard anybody yet using it in production in any way. Uh, are you seeing that people thinking about using it in production now or is it is it really still very early days? It's really it's really early. It's really uh, development is really ongoing in progress now for instance the K native eventing part is really a draft. So they are just following the CNCF and the cloud events specification and implementing it right now. Uh, the, the, the implementing it right now. So it's not complete. Uh, I, I wouldn't suggest it for production for sure, uh, but it's the future around the running serverless uh, uh, paradigm and uh, uh, computing model in Kubernetes. So uh, if you think uh, about in one year, uh, it will be uh, mature, enough mature, and there will be also uh, many implementation on top of Knative okay, running uh, in order to let you run the function. I, I can say it's like uh, Istio one year ago. So Knative okay, right now is like uh, Istio one year ago. It's something that is really new, cool, is really needed by everyone, but it's not ready for production for sure. And also for testing, uh, need some, uh, some time uh, uh, because some components are, are not ready or they are just in definition right now. But that makes sense. So thanks. Thanks for that. I, was, I, I hear all of the new projects come out through the CNCF and stuff that people are working on at Red Hat. And I always see this stuff come by and, and the Knative stuff is, I mean, there, I think there are like three or four talks at KubeCon um, North America and Seattle coming up. Um, and it's, you know, one of those things that um, popped up and came up really quick. So I, I'm looking forward to, to going to the KubeCon and, and sitting in on those sessions. This is going to, this session that has really helped um, me personally understand a bit better the, you know, how it all works together. So thank you very much for that. Um, I will upload this on YouTube. People have been asking that as well. Uh, probably take me until tomorrow morning to um, upload it and get it formatted for YouTube um, at, along with Natalie's uh, slides. Um, and if you are coming um, to KubeCon, uh, please uh, consider joining us for the OpenShift Commons gathering the day before um, KubeCon on December 10th. Um, we're going to have an all-day festival of all things OpenShift and upstream there. So that this is a really good point 
place to also meet some of the folks who are working on these upstream projects as well. So a number of them will be in the room um, and we'll probably have at least one or two more talks um, on Knative um, and uh, Michael, who's having technical difficulties with his uh, bandwidth in his hotel room, wherever they have him stashed today, um, will probably get you to do another one um, and going on a bit of a deeper dive on high performance applications and deploying those. So there's lots of good content coming, like you said, Natali, uh, that this is all very much um, uh, new early days, but um, it is definitely something we at Red Hat see as um, a necessity, uh, an, a necessary piece of the, the cloud native um, ecosystem. So we're, we're looking forward to um, working with the community on it and making sure that it's um, in a year's time, maybe sooner, ready for production workloads. So yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I think uh, we are in a good path. Um, I think, uh, uh, by, by, by the way, Knative is the standard now de facto for Kubernetes for running serverless workloads. So in the future, we really hope it will be uh, um, enough mature and stable to, to run those workloads in production. And we are working uh, as Red Hat and our just community to, 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 to do it. And yeah. I, I would like to to thank you for giving my giving me in, uh, this lot to talk about uh, Knative and uh, uh, OpenShift. Um, and thank you all the people uh, and all the attendees um, attending this event. Uh, I'm uh, of course available if you want to get more about this or just uh, uh, having more information. Uh, at KubeCon in Seattle, there will be a live demo for from our Red Hat BU. Uh, that uh, will also do will will do some uh, demo about Knative events. They are working on it, so it's will, it will be very interesting to attend uh, uh, on those demo that they will have. And uh, of course, I'm looking forward to join you guys at Commons in uh, Seattle. Oh, awesome, uh, Natalie! If you can send me the link to the session or the time when that um, demo is going to be done, I'll include that in the um, blog post on. OpenShift.com that contains the video and the resources links too, and um, along with your slides, we'll get that all up and out there in the next day or so. So yes, again, and if anyone is coming to KubeCon, please do join us for um, the OpenShift Commons gathering um, the day before. Um, if you are already registered for KubeCon, reach out to me and I can send you a promo code to get you in for free if you need to. Um, and uh, we're, we've got Got lots of good people on on the agenda and this is going to be probably one of the many topics that we cover off on that day as well so we're looking forward to it all so thanks again natalie um i know it's later in your day over there in italy and i really appreciate you taking the time to do this and yeah again yeah this we started with this conversation in helsinki um and trying to get you there but uh, I'm really glad that we finally got, got you on, on the line and able to give this presentation. So thanks a lot. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, see you soon and talk to you soon. So. All right. Yeah.